Dave Allen from Muckton Questions. Today I want to have a look at making some ebooks, and we'll just look at the ordinary EPUB versions and compare that with the EPUBs that you get with iBooks Author. And here we've got this one trick pony for converting HTML files to EPUBs and you can add files and you can add folders to it. So let's click on this HTML file I made earlier and if you put more than one file in there you can merge them all into one final ebook publication. And the final result that you get out of this application is just a very simple EPUB book, no front cover to it. You don't get any options to add the name of the author to it and it's very very simple indeed. Just click on that big green start button and you've very soon got an ebook. And that's the good thing about it, that it's quick in operation. That's about it really. And this is the ebook that I just created and when you look at it in Stanza it doesn't look very good but when you look at it on your iPad it looks like it's supposed to. So on the iPad you get all your headers and everything else but in Stanza, the pile of rubbish that it is, you don't get anything at all. So the Apple Pages application is another option for making the standard ebooks and here I've got one with a front page to it and some pages in there and I think it's going to work a whole lot better than using that other one trick pony we looked at earlier. The one thing that you have to remember with pages is that the images that you put in there have to be put in there in line. If they're floating it's not going to work. So if you're going to make yourself an ebook then what you should do first of all is go to the format menu and go to import styles and then you can bring in the ebook styles from the document that you can get from Apple which is all about making an ebook. It's called ePub best practices for pages and what you want to do is to select all and then click on delete a duplicate so you don't overdo it and then you can carry on from there. The other way to do that is to open up that document in Pages and to save it as a template. So when you're starting your EPUB book in Pages, make sure that you open up from the word processing part of this area here because you can't make an ebook out of one that's there for desktop publishing. When you've completed all your editing and you're ready to export it out to make it actual into an ebook, then you go to the share menu, export to ebook and you can put in your name and you can put in the genre and you can have it all ready for exporting out to the EPUB format. And then you can go into Finder, find the file that you created for your EPUB book and it's this one here and I'm going to drop this into Yoink and then I'm going to be able to drop it from there into iTunes. Then all you have to do is to synchronize it up with your iPad and you'll be able to view it on the iPad and it's going to look a whole lot better than it does in that sort of crappy application called Stanza. I wrote this text initially in the application Moo. I wrote it in Markdown, then I did a copy of the text from the other pane in the application and I was able to put it in without any messing about. I had all the headers and everything else there. I can still make changes to the styles of text if I want to. But in any case, let's have a look at iBooks Author, which I think is a much better option. You do get a lot more options when you're actually making the iBook, and it's a far better experience for the reader as well. For the reader, it's much better for making notes and for learning things from one of these eBook textbooks. But if you're going to make one of these eBooks and you know it's going to go for an iPad, then use iBooks Author to do it. That's what I say. It's all well and good using something like Pages to make a book if it's mainly all just text. But if you want something where you're going to work a little bit more on the graphic design, then I suggest you go for the much better option of iBooks Author. So let's just select some of this Lorem Ipsum there and actually put some real text in there. And you know what? It's going to look great. And your readers are going to love you for it too. So this is Dave Allen for Mac 20 Questions. If you haven't hit the like button yet for this video, click on that now on the bottom left hand corner. When the last part of the video shows up with the subscribe button, click on that subscribe button and make sure they don't miss out on any more videos that are produced through the Mac 20 Q Wizard Gold channel on YouTube. Bye bye now, be good and if you can't be good, be careful.